in your practice, what proportion of patients require targeting HIV by a, a drug that works by a different mechanism than those that are currently available? Yeah, so, so this used to be a big issue. People with multi-drug <laughs> resistant virus, lots of transmitted resistance, lots of cross resistance within classes, much, much less of an issue. And most of them are the ones Joe was talking about, the people we started on treatment 20 years ago, the transmitted right. resistance from vertical okay. transmission. So there's a subset of them. They're pretty rare. Even in an inner city population like mine, they're pretty rare because most of the failures aren't taking their drugs at all. We have one patient who's in the ibilizumab for stem severe clinical program. But they exist. One. But they yeah. exist. And we, I think, are very pleased when companies are willing to go out sure. there and try to create new drugs for a niche population who's in great need. It's a, it's a big challenge, right? Because the, they're unequivocally, it is a need, right? Yeah, but but it's, a, it's, a, it's a small need. It's a niche. And so really the challenge is to both the FDA and the developers, of how, do you, how do you create studies that, you know, where you, you want to study 300 people and each center has one person? You have to, you have, to have 300 centers, and, and that costs a lot of money to, to, to do that sort of thing. And, and, and again, you know, in the early 2000s, the people who failed with lots of drug resistance were actually our very adherent people that somehow stayed alive when they took AZT and then D4T, then indinavir, and they stayed alive. So some of those studies, like the benchmark study and the yeah. power study, Incredibly patients adherent. actually did really well because they were really adherent people. Okay. Uh, even though they had lots of resistance, they, were, they had lots of resistance because they were adherent. Now it's the other way around. Now these people that have you know, multi-drug resistant virus some of them are people that have a really hard time adhering to therapy. A lot of, a lot of them are, are uh, congenitally acquired HIV. Right, yeah, they, mm -hmm. adolescents that have been through kind of poor formulations and, and, and... The other challenge is incentivizing companies right. no, to no, that, invest yeah. in developing these drugs for a small patient population. Well, you know, the one that I was poking around at was this uh, Fostemsevere. Mm -hmm. I mean, only because when I looked at it, not as an ID person and not as an HIV person, entirely new mechanism. Which, which, in my unfiltered way, untutored way, seems to say, well, gee, if it's a different mechanism, it has a chance for these multi-drug resistant people. Yeah, I mean, that's what saved the lives of so many people was the new mechanism, integrase, right? That was what really uh, got these men and women through the mid-2000s. And, and, and so it, the, the problem with uh, Fostemavir is that unlike... Um, you know, dolutegravir, which is one pill once a day, it's great if you have resistance, but it's also great up front. Uh, Fostemavir is not that, right? It, 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 it has kind of modest antiviral activity. It it's definitely has antiviral activity, but it's a little bit modest. It's an attachment inhibitor, so it attaches to the most variable part of the virus. That's the envelope. So a attacking the most variable part of the virus is not the best strategy because the virus is going to become resistant more easily. So so it really, um, uh, it, it's it's unfortunately, just kind of modest uh, antiviral activity. So, uh, and it, it probably will need to be given twice a day, which m makes it a little bit tougher, but we need it. There will be people that need it. Yeah. Um, it just and, it and won't be that many. We, we need more than one new drug in right. one new class because right. a lot of these people have resistance to the protease inhibitors, have resistance to the NNRTIs, the integrase inhibitors. So it's not just having one new drug, you have to combine that with some okay, other yeah. drugs that have some activity. But again, and this, that can be a challenge. This is a drug that attacks the virus, not the cell, not replication inside the cell. That's why it's a different class. Am I it, right it, about it, that? it blocks attachment. So, so obviously HIV has to bind to the CD4 molecule, then uh, touch one of the chemokine receptors and get inside the cell. By binding to the virus, it actually blocks binding to the CD4 molecule. So, so um, we have another drug that blocks entry, Maravarock, yeah. uh, that actually binds to the cell and prevents the virus from entering. But, so, so it's an important drug. There's no, no question that it is a different mechanism. You, 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 the patients who are um, resistant to our protease inhibitors and INSTEs and NNRTIs likely won't be resistant to this, though some people are naturally resistant, a small percentage, because it binds to that envelope. So, so it's unequivocally useful, and the phase three study is ongoing. In fact, it's mid, it's past its primary endpoint. It, it likely will show activity. It probably, you know, we'll find out probably this summer whether it has much toxicity, but probably not because the study's ongoing. It hasn't been stopped. Um, so, 
um, it will be available. The, the issue is it'll be available for a small subset of people. But what and do you then see there's the this other drug, Ibalizumab, right. which actually targets the CD4, the Again, cell, an entry in another it, right? blocks okay. entry, a completely different mechanism. And that's also in fairly advanced stages of yeah. development. Right. So we do have two new drugs. Would those two drugs two that be complementary, perhaps? Might be. Because they, they have two different pathways. It's possible. And, yeah, in all likelihood to meet some of the needs Ian was talking about, yeah. where we can't that's, just add one mm -hmm. drug to people who have a lot of other resistance. They're going to need two. But this, ibalizumab is an infusion. OK. An infusion right now. It's not a pill. So that makes it challenging. And they, they're Definitely. working on it, formulating it, so maybe it can be an injection. But right now, yeah. it's an infusion. So here we go with compliance again. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. And cost but, and, and But it occurs to me that what we're looking at are, are drugs for multiply resistant or heavily resistant patients. Because you've been telling me that most of these drugs, for most of the patients, mm -hmm. work really right. well. So this is a very small subset of the people with HIV in the United States. But, but, it's, but it's, a, it's a needy subset. So. I mean, that, that subset, they're running out of time, they're running out right. of drugs, right? Yeah, right. absolutely. The clock yeah. is ticking on these people. Yeah, no, I have a guy who's been on Ibalizumab now for six years with, with Tipranavir, a drug we never use, and Maraviroc, another drug we almost never use. And, you know, he's hoping this drug will get approved because what's he going to do if it doesn't get approved? So. Tell me about the potential here. I mean, it's very small, but it occurs to me that as we treat more and more people with more and more drugs, we're going to see more and more resistance. Actually, not true. Not true. No, Why not? No, because it turns out that the, the antidote to resistance is virologic suppression. <coughs> and with the more successful regimens that we have, the more people are virologically <coughs> suppressed and the lower the incidence of resistance. And that's... so. so but, but very smart people predicted exactly what you were saying. But it, turned out, not, it, it, it turned out not to be the case, thank goodness. Right, so. it, in the setting of monitoring. Yeah. It, now, in, in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and other um, resource-limited <laughs> settings, uh, where they don't monitor, so they don't detect failure earlier, you certainly see accumulation of yeah. resistance, absolutely. Usually nuke and NNRTI resistance, which fortunately will likely be able to be overcome. But monitoring is an important part of it. So okay. we talked about spacing out monitoring, yeah. but you, we would never get rid of viral load monitoring.